What is up everyone? Welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover this new power bay designed specifically for Nintendo Switch. So it's essentially a dock that you can hook up a GameCube controller and some Bluetooth devices as well. Pretty solid, pretty cool. I'll cover all the stuff that you get in the box with this, which is basically just this, but as well as what are some of the cool things you can do with this device. And then I'll also take a quick moment to kind of discuss if you should be getting this knowing how notorious Nintendo is for bricking their systems with their firmware updates. Stay tuned for that after we get a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVGmall.com. GVG Mall carries a wide variety of game currencies and gift cards that you could use to take your gaming to the next level. If you're looking for a fresh copy of Windows or Microsoft Office, then you can certainly find those on GVGmall.com as well. They are priced very competitively and offer legit copies of Microsoft software. You can pick up a copy of Windows 10 Pro for under 15 bucks. Visit gvgmall.com for more information and use code TSB to save during checkout. So welcome back guys. Now, first of all, just wanna say it feels good to be back doing some stuff that I love to do, which is obviously YouTube. I know it's been a bit of a time since I put out a video as things were really hectic, but I'll save that for another video, not to go on about that. So over here, I've got a Nintendo Switch. This is the original first gen one, which basically has the crappier battery life compared to the newer one and I think that's pretty much the only main difference. And as you guys can see, I've got a custom shell on here that's called Chameleon Purple or something like that. Kind of changes shades between blue and purple. Like it, and on top of that, got the matching shell for a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. But obviously you guys aren't here to see my fancy cases and different types of stuff that I have for my Switch. What we're here to talk about today is the Brook Power Bay Nintendo Switch dock. So I'm gonna break this video down into just a few very simple sections. So there, I'm not really gonna do much of an unboxing because frankly, this is the unboxing. You open the box and this is what you get out of it. It doesn't even come with a manual or anything, but there is a QR code on the back that you can always feel free to scan with your phone and that way you can get access to the manual on how to learn to use some of the functions of this device. Now straightforward, it is very simple, it's small, and it's got a pretty low profile, so it's perfect for people who are looking to carry a dock with you when you're traveling, rather than taking along the original Nintendo Switch dock. Now, not to get off point here, but it is also a challenge to find some of these guys. It's like, they're always sold out, you can only find refurbished ones, but if you stick through it, I will always ultimately recommend to go with an OEM one, just because there's no you know, concept of being unsafe with your Switch or risking it to get Dot, uh, brick or whatever, right? So anyways, we'll leave that topic for another video and I'll kind of touch on it today. So here is the Brook Power Bay, okay? And now this device essentially lets you mount your Nintendo Switch onto it and give you video output to an HDMI certified television that you may be using. What the cool thing about this is the fact that you've got two ports to hook up GameCube controllers. So for all of you Smash Bros fans out there that love playing Smash, you can essentially just plug this bad boy in and then you're good to go back reliving those old school days, you know, when you're playing on a GameCube and this was the controller to have that you've probably just been used to. Much better, in my opinion, than playing with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now, one thing to note, for some odd reason, when you plug the GameCube controller in, it like maps the Nintendo Switch Pro Control schematics or scheme or whatever button maps so it's kind of weird how they set that up it didn't just default to that but you can go in the settings and change that so that it works like an original gamecube controller should inside smash brothers so with that out of the way that is definitely a unique feature that you don't really find on a lot of other docks you have to buy different types of usb converters to plug in your gamecube controller so with this you're safe to do that right out of the box the other two things you'll note on the front here is there's two more USB ports which allow you to plug in wired versions of Switch Pro controllers if that's what you guys have. So for a total of four ports, you can connect up to four controllers, two being GameCube ones and then two being Switch Pro ones or wired GameCube ones that go with a USB port in the back. Now, another thing on this is that they've designed this so that you can actually take apart this little handle over here, kind of like this, just pops right off and then you can slide this right on front to give yourself a little bit of an angle like that maybe a little bit of a close-up so that it's kind of facing you in a more comfortable way i don't know honestly guys to be very blunt it's a little bit gimmicky and it feels kind of cheap and plasticky when you do this so i personally think to leave it off would be the best option and i wouldn't recommend that you guys really use this as a portable dock not hooking up to a tv just to kind of sit there and play on it i mean you could do that definitely but I don't know, kind of gimmicky to me. Now, aside from doing this on the front, you can also do the same thing on the back and give it an angle that's kind of tilting downward. So 
Cool little thing that they have in here. Frankly, like I said, I think it's kind of gimmicky, but nonetheless, it's a feature that you can take advantage of if you choose to. Now in its natural position, it kind of looks and reacts just like a GameCube traditionally did, where you can just carry it by this handle. So the burning question is, how does this perform? And there's one more feature that I have not talked about this aside from the controllers. It is its Bluetooth capability. So before we talk about how this performs, let me cover that real quick. There is a button on here called the function button. And by pressing this, you're essentially turning this into a pairing mode that you can connect up to two wireless Bluetooth headphones and it supports aptX profiles, meaning you're gonna get latency free audio coming into this headphone. So if two of you guys are playing and you both have headsets on, you can pair both of them and both of you guys can get audio going to your headset. So again, the Switch has Bluetooth built into it, but for some odd reason, Nintendo just did not want it to go past the use of controllers and you, for whatever reason, can't hook up any kind of audio devices or headphones or speakers via Bluetooth to this without buying a separate kind of dongle for it. And I've covered some of those in my previous videos. So it's nice to see that you have an all-in-one solution here. Now, in terms of performance, guys, this thing worked easily and fantastically right out of the box. Now, with that, I would say it does not come with a power adapter. So please make sure that if you do use a power adapter, use only the one that came with your original Switch. And if you don't have one, I would strongly, strongly recommend that you get one. And here's the reason why I am being very, very strongly opinionated on using an OEM Nintendo Switch power plug. The reason is I reached out to Brooke and I point blank asked them, hey, it's pretty common knowledge that if you guys have third party docks that get used with switches, it ends up breaking them because of the different power delivery system. Now I'm no expert in this field guys and I'll link a video by Wolf10 in the description below. Awesome channel, great guy. Um, bit of a character, I love him, I think he's awesome. Um, and he goes into really good depth of why, you know, there's this issue with Nintendo Switch's power delivery system, even though it's using a USB Type-C, all this stuff that I can't really explain to you, but basically why it ends up breaking the Switch just because of how that thing operates. So with that aside, you know, take out the time from your day to go ahead and look at that and find out all that information you want. But basically the response that I got from the manufacturer, Brooke, in this case, was that they recommend that you use the original power adapter. That way there is no real chance of it having a impact on your system. Now, I will be completely honest. It's great that the manufacturer is saying that, but I would say take that with a little bit of salt because you never really know what Nintendo is going to do. So I, by all means, I'm not saying don't go ahead and buy this, that it can break your switch. We don't really know if it can. I mean, the biggest one that did that was the Nyko one, which everyone's aware about, but this isn't that. There are several other third-party ones that have been deemed as safe to use with your Switch. And personally, I have an Insignia one that I use all the time in a different room, and I've now started using this with no issues, apparently. What I would say is when you're not using it and you're not you know, taking advantage of whatever features this has, just take your Switch out of it and only put it in when you're docked and ready to play. And avoid firmware updates if you're gonna leave this in, if it's doing it automatically, that might end up doing something to your system. So with that caveat out of the way, this is a pretty solid dock to use. And if you're not scared of breaking your Switch or going through any of those kind of challenges, this may very well be a perfect product for you to check out. On top, especially if you like playing Smash Bros because now you can hook up your GameCube controllers natively to this. Now, what I like about it is the form factor is really small. It works really easily. It's super simple to wire up with your TV or your monitor, whatever it is that you're trying to hook up. There's an HDMI port on the back and a power plug port with USB Type-C. Again, that's the same one that you're gonna be expected to use considering you're gonna go with OEM like I recommend. Do not use anything else other than OEM. I'm just gonna say it a thousand times so you guys get it in your mind. But other than that, on the bottom, they gave these little rubber feet that really do a good job at holding it in its place. And as you can see, I can pretty much move my whole table and not move this device just by putting my hand on it, which is great. Another reason why I'd say avoid using the little, you know, gimmick that they gave over here, because if you use this, you kind of lose the strength of it. And if you use a more solid, heavy duty 4K HDMI cable, for whatever reason, you want to use it with a 1080p dock, it'll like wiggle this around, right? The, the weight of the cable and this tension of it will just pull this around. So all in all guys, it's a very solid dock and it's not very expensive either, which leaves it in a realm of affordability. Again, that may be another reason you guys look to third party docks. I would say, despite all the different docks that I've used and reviewed, I would prefer to use OEM at any time just for that peace of mind. But if you guys are okay to take a little bit of a risk and you know potentially use something that's cooler because of the features that it offers, like Bluetooth in this case and the GameCube controller hookups in this case, this is a very, very solid product to go for and I cannot recommend it enough. Now, that being said, there are a couple other things by this manufacturer that maybe you guys have heard of or have not heard of. 
Brooke makes a ton of different accessories for the Nintendo Switch, for PlayStation 4, for the Xbox, and a couple of them were sent to me as well to check out. Now, I'm not gonna make full dedicated videos on those just because I don't think there's enough real content I can put on it, to be very frank, but I do wanna show you guys some things that will kinda of give you a sense of what this company is about without dragging this video much longer than it's already going. So, for number one, they also manufacture a device called the PS4 Marine Controller. And this is basically what it is. It's on my custom God of War controller. I don't know if you guys can see this real well, but essentially it's a dongle that hooks up to your controller and it lets you pair your PlayStation 4 controller to any system you want. I can connect this to my Switch wirelessly, my PC, the Xbox One, and obviously a PS4 itself, and even an Android and an iOS device. I mean, there's a ton of different things you can do. Basic settings, really quick and easy to configure, and on the fly, you can pair it through Bluetooth. It has everything built into the receiver. So if you've wanted to check out an Xbox One X because you're curious about how those graphics look, but you don't like the controller of an Xbox One or the feel of it, you can use this adapter a lot simpler than some of the other devices that are out there. And guys, I've personally tested it. It works fantastic. It's flawless. Now on the flip side, if you are a person who loves the Xbox One controllers, they have a product exactly like the PS4 Marine or the Xbox One controller. Same deal here. You can pair this with obviously an Xbox, a PC, your PlayStation 4 or your Nintendo Switch. Now it doesn't connect to an Android device or an iOS device and I think basically is because you can pair that anyways through the Bluetooth of the Xbox controller. So you don't really need to have that functionality built in. Both of these devices are very solid and very affordable and it just kind of goes to show you that Brook is about making quality. So when you look at their total portfolio of things that they make, they don't make cheap, you know, Chinese looking manufactured products that don't sit well, that don't clamp well, that don't pair well and use, you know, cheaper technology in it. So with that, I would say, keeping this in mind, it's a pretty safe bet to go ahead and pick up this dock if you're curious or if you're looking to get a dock that supports Bluetooth and the use of GameCube controllers. Now, one more thing I left out about the PS4 Marine controller is that it actually comes with four extensions that act as paddles that you can remap to use for different types of games, such as Call of Duty and whatnot to have that. I personally left them off because I felt like they got in the way a lot and that may be just a design flaw or maybe because of my hand. I don't know, but I happen to like it without that. So all the products by Broke are right here. You guys can check them out. I will leave links in the description below for you guys to check out all these different things. And hopefully that should help you guys make a decision on whether or not you want to purchase them. But anyways, guys, if you found this video helpful and you are liking this content, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're new to my channel, hey, go ahead and consider subscribing. I'm always trying to keep up with my content, although things have been a little bit hectic lately. But it feels good to be back, and I look forward to making more videos for you guys. So if you're here, please subscribe and stay tuned for my next video, and I will see you guys on my next one. Peace out.